Today I want to talk about what scientists thought the idea of heat was back in the 1700s and the early 1800s and how it compares to what we learned to be true over time. Of course, people would observe very hot things like this molten metal with a shower of sparks. It's very, very hot, and then over time it would cool off, it would stop glowing so much, and change what we now call the temperature of the object. We can see that from a cup of coffee. We have a very hot cup of coffee, we have some steam coming off spontaneously and without you doing anything, over time that coffee will go from very, very hot to much, much cooler. It'll get down to what we call room temperature spontaneously. People were trying to explain this for literally hundreds of years, but didn't quite know how it worked because partly because they didn't really know about the modern atomic theory of matter. So for instance, here is a bolt here. This half has been put in a blowtorch. It's very, very hot and it's glowing. It's obviously hotter on one end. It will cool off spontaneously going to a lower temperature. Now, scientists in the 1700s and the early 1800s actually believed that the concept of heat came from an invisible fluid called caloric. That was the name, caloric. You can uh, understand that our current word calorie kind of comes from the word caloric. And they thought that this caloric was almost like a fluid that could be transferred between two different objects. So, for instance, if this bolt is surrounded in the air, you know, there's more caloric in the bolt and it gets transferred much like a water water coming out of a glass or air diffusing through a room and it would be moving the heat through this invisible fluid from the hot item into the cold item. So they thought it was a physical substance. Now there were many experiments done over time and by the mid 1800s we understood that mechanical work, meaning moving objects, can actually contribute to heat as well, heating something up. They did experiments with cannons, of course you can, you can understand the heat there from the, from the propulsion of the cannonball, but actually just the physical rubbing of the bore by the cannonball can actually heat it up. So they knew that moving and, and friction between matter somehow is involved in the concept of heat and temperature. Now, scientists like James Clerk Maxwell, titans of their day, along with James Joule, figured out that heat and temperature were really related to the microscopic motions of atoms. Now, this culminated in equations that govern the kinetic theory of matter, the temperature of an object being related to the mass of the particles, the velocity of the molecules moving around, the average of the squares of the velocity, and something called the Boltzmann constant. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.